title of the subject today is Buy the Truth and Sell It Not. But before we get into the subject, we will sing a hymn of introduction, which is number 281. Number 281. I give my life for thee, what I have no little joy. My care of love is and reckoned from the dead. I give, I give my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? My father's house of light, I hid a sickle throne. I give the earthly night, no thundering far and low. I give, I left it all for thee. What hast thou given for me? I left, I left it all for thee. What hast thou given for me? I love this hope for thee. More than thy tongue can tell Of fearest I got thee To rescue thee from hell I hear I born it all for thee What hast thou born for me? I born, I born it all for thee what hast thou born for me? That is a question that God is asking each and every one of us. And that's a question that we will have to answer. The title of the subject, as I said just now, Buy the truth and sell it not. Truth is a treasure to be gained at any cost and never to be relinquished whatever the temptation. The closer a man comes to Jesus, and the more he studies the word of God, the more his eyes are open to the reality of things. Few realize how dangerous are the little self-deceptions. For what petty price they sell the truth and eternal life. In Matthew chapter 13, and verse 44, Jesus gives us an explanation of what the kingdom of heaven is like. It was a practice for the people to hide their treasures in the earth because of robbers and thieves in those days. But often, after that hiding place was forgotten, when death steps in. And a man who hires the land to cultivate, and as the land is plowed, the treasure is discovered. He sees a fortune within his reach. He returns to his home and sells all that he has in order to purchase that field containing the treasure. This parable, brethren, illustrates the value of the heavenly treasure and the effort that should be made to secure it. The more the man who found the treasure in the field was ready to part with everything that he had in order to secure hidden riches. So the finder of heavenly treasure will count no sacrifice to dare in order to gain the treasures of truth. Those who desire to find treasures of truth must dig for it as the 
young men who were digging for the treasures, the hidden treasures of the earth. John chapter 5 and verse 39, Jesus says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Only if we, as a people, God's people, would search the Bible, we would be better off. But now, we listen to someone whispering in the ear, and we accept everything they say instead of listening to Jesus, who gave all for us. When you search the scriptures, you will hear Jesus saying, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But nowadays we want all the things first and put Jesus after. But it don't work like that. Jesus says, seek you first, and then I will give you the blessing that comes after. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. And in verse 19, he says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on this earth, where moth and rough do corrupt, where men break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where nobody can get at it. That's what Jesus is saying to you and to me. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. If your treasure is in the kingdom of God, your heart will be up there. Psalms 119, verse 162, the psalmist David says clearly, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. In other words, when he read the word, it gives us him the encouragement. It gives him the strength. So as if he had a bundle of a, mil a few millions. That's what he's saying. And in Psalms 119, 105, he says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's the psalmist David. Brethren, read the word. Read the word daily, brethren. Apply it to yourself, because when you read the word, God is speaking to you. Do not apply it to somebody else when you read the word. God tell you, thou shalt not, he means you. We have a tendency, it means she, it means he. No, 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 no. God is speaking to you. When you read it, it applies to you. Obey what God says. That's what it is all about. Be like Mary. Remember the story of Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10? Mary have chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Mary liked to listen to the word. Anytime Jesus appeared, she wanted to be there. She wanted to hear what he has to say. She wanted to do what he said he, sh he should do. Mary liked the word. Be as Mary. Mary have chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Be like Mary, my dear brethren. Recorded in the book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, there's a confrontation between Jesus and his adversary. And you know that story quite well. Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Brethren, that's a message. A message for all of us. What does Jesus say the word will do spiritually? You, t you search the words. John 17, 17. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That's the Bible, brethren. And the more we read it, the more we, we, we become strengthened. Because that's what God wants us to, 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 to be like. Thy word is truth. And then in John 14, you know, after he promised that he's coming back for you, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Jesus, that's Jesus. I am the way. There's a lot of people who are walking about it saying that all road leads to heaven. That's not true. That's not true. That's rubbish. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Only the way of Jesus Christ leads to 
eternal city. And so, buy the truth and sell it not. Hold on to it with all your strength. Do not let go. There are those in the world today who say that we are New Testament Christians. We only believe in the New Testament. Brethren, let me say this to you. Jesus, after his crucifixion, was walking on the road to Emmaus. And two guys there were discussing the crucifixion. And Jesus joined in the conversation. That is recorded in Luke chapter 24, verse 25 to 27. And he said to them, the disciples asked a question. Jesus said unto them, O fools of heart and slow to believe all that the prophets did write. And the Bible says he began at Moses and bring all the, the, the scenarios to them to help them to understand. You understand? He expounded to them all the scripture and the things concerning himself. Say, for instance, you study the, 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 the Old Testament. The Old Testament, especially Psalms 22, it prophesied everything that was going to happen to Jesus on the cross of Calvary. If you haven't read it, read it. Psalms 22. Everything that happened on Calvary, long before it happened, it was prophesied there. And Jesus, when Jesus was talking to these two young men, there was no such thing as a New Testament. Scripture. One thing we have got to understand, when we read the Bible, especially 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God... You it is true that we don't like instruction. We don't like correction. That is true, isn't it? When you're doing something wrong and someone needs to correct you, you don't like that. But that is what the Bible is there for. The Bible is there for all co correction instruction on righteousness. You see, that is what the Bible is there for. But Jesus then, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 35, he says, thy word is true. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word Thus saith the Lord will never pass away. Brethren, I want you to take this message this morning and put it in your bosom to help you to understand that God wants you to come up to a higher state. That's God's plan for all of us because God's intention for you and for me is to save us in God's eternal kingdom. The devil's intention is to get you burning in hell with him. But the book of Matthew... 24 verse 30, 41 says, Hell is not made for you. Hell is made for the devil and his angels. But if you join the devil, you're going there too. But Jesus has already done everything possible to save you and die from hell. Why do you want to go down there? I'll tell you later on. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1 says, I look, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name in their foreheads. The father's name in the foreheads represents the seal of God. Verse chapter 7 of that same revelation, verse 3, says they had the seal of the living God. When a person is serious in searching for truth, their duty is to search the Bible. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 4 clearly tells us that he that saith, I know him, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not 
His commandments. The Bible uses strong language here. He's a liar. He is a liar. And the truth is not in him. So when you see people walking about telling you they have the truth, just point them to that. That if you're not keeping the commandments, the Bible says you are a liar and you don't have the truth. The truth is in those who preach and teach the commandments of God. And you'll get that in Matthew chapter 5 verse 19. He that teach and preach the commandments of God is blessed by God. That's what the Bible says. Matthew 19 verse 17 says, Jesus said to the young man, if you will enter into life, and you know who that young man was, keep the commandments. Jesus said so. Keep the commandments. He says the same to all of us. He says the same to all of us. In the closing book of the Bible, which is Matthew 24, verse 14, he said, Blessed are they that keep his commandments, for they shall have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Jesus said those words. The next verse he says, but outside are dogs. Outside are those who commit fornication and live in adultery. Outside are liars. Outside the kingdom are corrupt ones. Brethren, you have to make the choice whether you want to be in the kingdom of God or outside of the kingdom of God. The choice is yours. There's a philosophy going around where God is too good to destroy anybody. The need to read John 3.16. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. But if you don't believe in him, you've got to perish. That's what the Bible says. I didn't say. So therefore, God is sending a message to you and to me that we may prepare for the onslaught that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. To the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. Brethren, when you see the happenings around the world, in the religious world, in the political world, then you can understand what Jesus is talking about. To the law and the testimony, if they speak not, if they do, do, uh, their lives are not in harmony with the word, there is no light in them. The law, word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and it's a light unto my path. And so the law and the testimony is there to guide us. The law and the testimony is there to guide us. The law is the Ten Commandments. What is the testimony? It has to be something very, very important that it irritates the devil. The testimony irritates the devil. He don't like it. And let me explain. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17 tells us the devil was mad with the church that keeps the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. What it is, he's saying to me is there's a church on earth that is obeying, that have the two characteristics, which is the commandments of God, keeping and teaching the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. And when you want to understand these things, you don't go very far. The same book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10 explains to you what is the testimony. The testimony of God is the spirit of prophecy. The Bible says, worship him that have the testimony of God. And the, the test, for the testimony of God is the spirit of prophecy. Now, in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21, the Bible tells us, when the Bible was given, holy men of God spake as they were guided 
by the Holy Spirit. Now, you hear people tell you, man, write the Bible. When people say that to you, tell them you should go and write one too. Man, write the Bible. The Bible says clearly that man do the writing. Men who were willing to be obedient did the writing. But the Holy Spirit guided them what to write. You understand? That's what the Bible says. Holy men of God. Not any and every man. They were guided. They were direct. They do the writing, but the Holy Spirit was guiding them and telling them. It's like a child and a school teacher. This teacher is telling the child what to write. You understand? The, the child doing the writing, but the teacher is guiding it. And therefore, the Holy Spirit okay, guided them. Now, Jesus says clearly, Jesus says clearly that when the spirit of truth is come, you know, just before he was, he was about to leave, he says, when the Holy Spirit, when the truth is, the spirit has come, he shall guide you into all truth. That's what Jesus says. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. You know, who is the Holy Spirit? The third person of the Godhead. The third person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's why in Matthew 28, he says, when you're baptized, you baptize them in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. That's the Bible. So we follow God's holy word. Good. When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Now, I want to tell you that spirit of prophecy is advanced information that God is giving to his church. It has always been like that. God's intention is not to keep you ignorant God's intention is to give you advanced information so that when things happen, you will already know and prepare for what is going to take place. Isn't that right? You ever hear the, 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 the saying that God sends a warning before he sends destruction? You ever hear that? God's intention is to save all of us, not to destroy us. But that Satan is, is willing that you should not listen. You should disobey. All right? I would like to, 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 to read a, a little note here from this book, Last Day Events. Page 178. 178. It says, It is Satan's plan to weaken the faith of God's people in the testimonies. And this is happening. I'm hiding from it. It is happening. Because many who you, you don't think are, they don't believe that was for their day. That's a bunch of garbage. Spirit of prophecy is advanced information that God has given to us. I have been reading it for 55 years. And I love spirit of prophecy. I have all my books. I read it. Because why? It is information that God wants me to prepare for what the devil is, is doing. Now, if you know a, a crook is coming tonight at, at, at one o'clock, what, what would you do? Not prepare? That's common sense, isn't it? But God knows what the devil is planning for you because the devil don't mean that you should get in heaven. His aim is that you're going to hell burning with him. And then when he gets you down there, he's laughing at you. That's the devil's plan for all of us. But God's plan is that we prepare for the future. That's why he says, prepare to meet your God. It says, it is Satan's plan to weaken the faith of God's people into testimonies. Next follows skepticism in regard to the vital points of our faith, the pillars of our position, then doubt as to the Holy Scriptures, and then the downward march to perdition. When the testimonies which are once believed are doubted and given up, Satan knows the deceived ones will not stop at this, and he redoubles his effort till he launches them in open rebellion which becomes incurable and ends in destruction. That's the devil's plan. He don't want you to believe what the servant of the Lord is saying. And let me go on a little further. So as I said, it is advanced information. The devil does not want you to know what he's planning for your destruction. I advise you, brethren, study the word of God. Commit its precious promises to memory so that when we shall be deprived of our Bibles, 
when we shall, uh, we may still be in possession of the word of God. Do you know that you are supposed to read the Bible and store it? Because Jesus even said that when they take you to court later on, don't worry about what you shall say. Because the Holy Spirit at that time will bring back to your memory the things that you have studied and give you the answers. Jesus said that. And if you all, all you do is watch television and news, read newspapers, the, the Holy Spirit can't bring back anything. The time has come, brethren, for us to wake up. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 tells us clearly, wake up. Time of sleep in this past. It's about time we prepare to meet our God. Study the word of God. Commit it precious promises to memory so that when we shall be deprived of these things, thing. the book Patriots and Prophets, page 620, 626. Christians should be preparing for what is coming upon the earth as an overwhelming surprise. And this preparation they shall make by diligent studying the word of God and striving to conform their lives to its precepts. Buy the truth and sell it not. That's the greatest decision that anyone can ever make. And I will explain that to you in a minute. Buy the truth and sell it not. Brethren, I urge you, read the word. I urge you, study the word. I urge you, believe the word. I urge you, obey the word. And I urge you, live the word. This is the only way that we can receive the seal of God and be among the 144,000. Do you understand what that means? 144,000 who have come through the time of trouble. The seal of God is not a mark that anybody can see, but it's in a settling into the truth. When you make up your mind that this is God's word, this is God's truth, and regardless of what anybody say or what anybody do, I will remain fervent. It is only then. It is just like the close of probation. You read a story of the close of probation. The close of ablation comes when you make up your mind. Some people may think it is, oh God, oh, no, 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 no. When you make up your mind, whether you can serve God or serve the devil, then God accepts your position. One thing God don't do is force anybody. You know that. God don't force anybody. God leave it open to you. And you make the choice. The consequences later on will be yours. But you make the choice. You either have the seal of God or you're going to have the mark of the beast. You know that? Read Revelation chapter 14. Verse 7 on, it tells about those who have the mark of the beast. It's going to be a terrible time. It's going to be a dreadful time. They will have the seven seals of Revelation chapter 6. You understand? Signs all around the world is saying that Jesus is coming soon. You realize that? Do you watch the news sometimes? And you notice that every day there's tragedy in America. Do you notice it? When they're in a plane crash, when they're in a plane dropping down, there's fire in the ship, there's fire in, 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 in the bus, carrying school the children. There's, there's tragedies everywhere now. But these are signs telling us that the end is near. Although all these happenings will affect us, our greatest concern is the signs in the religious world. Understand that clearly, brethren. The world, is, the world is tampering with the word of God. Men has no authority whatsoever to talk about they can change this and change that of the word of God. The book of Revelation says clearly, Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues. And if a man shall take away, God shall take away his part in the book of life. No human being has any authority. So when a man is going to come and tell you, I change the Sabbath. Brethren, brethren, that's a dangerous step. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34 tells me clearly, righteousness exalteth a nation. Righteousness exalteth a nation and sin is a curse to that nation. It is true that there, America is finding all kinds of alibis and excuses for the tragedies that is going on. Global warming caused it. Global warming is nothing to do with it. The point is, you turn away from the word of God. So God withdraw his protection from you. Revelation 14 tells us clearly that God commanded the angels to hold the winds of strife until I have sealed the servant of God in their foreheads. That's what the Bible says. 
But when you don't want God, when you tell God that we don't want this man to rule over us, what do you expect? He's not going to stay there. He's going to withdraw himself. And then Satan glad for the opportunity. And this is what's happening to the world. And brethren, let me tell you, this is only the smoke that we are seeing. This is only the smoke that we are seeing. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And I will tell you something a little, little later. With your permission, let me read a couple of quotations from this book here. Last Day Events, page 45. Listen carefully. Seventh-day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people. Do you believe that? Well, let me tell you something. Seventh -day Advent, the Seventh-day Adventist church on this planet Earth is God's true church. I'm telling you that because I've studied it and I know it. There's no other church like the Seventh-day Adventist church. There's no other church have the understanding and the knowledge and the information as the Seventh-day Adventist church. None. That may sound strange to some of you. But the more you study it, the more you understand it. God said that the devil is mad with the church that keeps the commandments of God. Why is he not mad with the other churches? There's a reason. There's a reason. One thing God hates is the Sabbath. He hates it. That, that Satan hates is the Sabbath. And he don't want you to be obedient. He wants you to be disobedient. By the cle great clever, clever of truth, he has cut them out from the quarry of the world and brought them into connection with himself. God has made them his representatives and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the last work of salvation. The greatest wealth of truth ever entrusted to mortals, the most solemn and fearful warnings ever sent by God to man has been committed to the Seventh-day Adventist church in this world. You could want anything more than that? God is looking... Huh? Why did you think that uh, the, the Apostle Paul says, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, ye are a chosen generation. Ye are a royal priesthood. Why do you think so? Because God specially called us out of darkness into this glorious light. And God wants us to share this light with others. In a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the word of God. They have been given a word of the most solemn import, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. Isn't that wonderful? God has called his people, you and I, that we should go out there and warn other people about the tragedies to come. Page 144 of this same book. It says, a great crisis awaits the people of God. Do you believe that? It is coming, brethren. Whether you like it or not, it is coming. And you can't avoid it. Very soon, our nation will attempt to enforce upon all the observance of the first day of the week as a sacred day. That is coming. And let me tell you something, within a few months, that is going to begin to happen. It sounds strange to you, but it isn't strange to me. Very, very soon, this is going to happen. Because in this same book, it tells you when the Republican government take over, in Testimonies chapter 4 and 451, when the Republican government take over, this is what is going to happen. You are going to be forced to obey the laws of the land instead of the laws of God. But I want you to understand, brethren, always remember Daniel, always remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were asked to bow down, they said, we will not bow down. The God that we serve will deliver us. And even if he don't deliver us, we still will not bow down. Did God deliver them? Yes. But I tell you something. When my man came to the, when the king came to the, the door that morning, he said, Daniel, oh, wonderful man. Wonderful man. God, is, Daniel said, God has sent his angels to close the lion's mouth that they did not touch me. And you know what the Bible tells me? If you read that story, it tells me that after the king was so satisfied 
after the king was so satisfied, what he did was call the accusers of Daniel and his wives and his ch their children and throw them in the lion's den. The Bible said so. And the lion massacred them. You see, it is not good to be a liar. You understand? What goes around comes around. Isn't that right? It is not good to be a liar. It is not good to envy. It is not good to have evil in your hearts against one another. The Bible says so. Let me press on. Good verse uh, 136. Verse one, 148. I don't know if I have time to get to this. It says, hoarded wealth will soon be worthless. You understand what it means? Hoarded wealth will soon be worthless. When the decree shall go forth that none shall buy or sell, expect they have the mark of the beast, very much means will be of no avail. God calls for us now to do all in our power to send forth warning to the world. But let me tell you a secret. Hoarded wealth will mean a help later on. There's a lot of us who got money in the bank. And there's nothing wrong in that. There's nothing wrong in that. Because the truth is, we should have something put aside for a rainy day. God understands that. Good. But do you know the day is coming when it wouldn't be... You can't get it? Do you know the day is coming when it wouldn't be yours? Do you know in Europe, there's a country right now the bank gone bankrupt or went well gone bankrupt and the people can't get the money whether by credit card or by what and the government gave them permission to hold on upon the people's money do you know that this is what is coming brethren terrible things are ahead waiting for us that is why the same book says a lot of us when that begin to happen when you can't buy nor sell that's revelation 12. When you can't buy nor sell, we will leave the truth and turn back into the world. But no, we can't afford that. All right, let, let me go on a bit further. 136. It said, The whole world is to be stirred with enmity against Seventh day Adventists. You accept that or you believe that, brethren? The whole world will be against you. Simply because you stand up for what is right. Do you know that even in the world today, when you stand up for what is right, nobody don't like you? This is the situation. The whole world will be stirred with enmity against Seventh-day Adventists because they will not yield homage to the papacy by honoring Sunday, the institution of the anti-Christian power. Those who trample upon God's law make human laws which they will force the people to accept. Men will devise and counsel and plan what they will do. The whole world keeps Sunday, they say. And why should not this little people, who are a few in number, do according to the laws of the land? You understand what is coming? This is what is coming. We will be a few among the crowds and the whole world. It is said that when, Am uh, when America sneezes, the whole world catches the cold. You understand? So when this starts in America in a few months' time, when this starts in America, the whole world will follow suit, and you will pay the penalty. But, as I said, I always say, Christianity is not a life of convenience. It's a life of sacrifice. I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? This is Jesus. And Jesus is saying that if you lose your life for my sake, you shall gain it. He said, don't be worried about those who can kill the body. But worry about the ones who can kill both life and body in hell. That's what Jesus is saying. The same Jesus is able, who created you in the very beginning, is able to call you from the grave. So don't flatter yourself that you're going to get cremated and think that that's the end of it. That can't work. I think there's, there's one more quotation I have here for you. Just one more. And so, brethren, God wants to save all of us. Don't you believe that? That's why he said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. 
God wants you in heaven. Your place is up there. Do you take communion? And when you drink the cup, what did Jesus say? I will not drink of this cup with you until I do it in my Father's kingdom. Jesus is hoping and waiting for you to make your decision that you will think in God's eternal kingdom. Isaiah chapter 53 says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. How can we neglect, brethren, so great salvation? How can we do this? Sunday worship is coming and it will be forced upon you. You can either accept the seal of God or the mark of the beast. There's no middle ground in this channel. It is either God or the devil, one or the other. And God is pleading with you. It's not going to be easy, but by studying the word, by obeying the word, then God promised he will give you the strength to stand up for what is right. I gave my life for you. What hast thou given for me? In great controversy, page 655, no language can express the longing which the disobedient and disloyal feel for that which they have lost forever. What is that? Eternal life. Eternal life. And I used to hear my grandmother singing a song. Oh, what a weeping and wailing. You know that song? As the loss was told of their faith, their cry to the rocks and the mountains, their prayer, but their prayer was too late. Oh, what a tragedy it will be. It's going to be the same thing as Jesus says, as, as it was in the days of Noah. Noah preached for 120 years. Nobody didn't want to hear him. Foolish old man. They stood up there and watched the birds flying into the ark. They stood up there and watched the animals walking two by two going in the ark. And mankind was so sensible. Mankind had so much common sense. Listening to the, the radio calling program, listening to the television, he had so much sense that he wouldn't make a move. But then a few days after, when the rain started to fall, then they come knocking. No, no, we now believe. The door that God shut, let no man open. And brethren, let me tell you something. When Jesus returns, when everything is closed with you, the Bible is saying it will be forever too late. Oh, what a weeping and wailing. At the loss was told of their faith. You know, Jesus says that many will come to him saying, My Lord, Lord, have I not done this? Have I not? Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I don't know you. Lord, have mercy. What a horrible day. There's nothing you can exchange for eternal life. Brethren, eternal life is there for all of us. When you look up and see what you have lost because of stupidity, because of holding on to something in this world. Jesus says in Matthew 24, 21 verse 4, There shall be no more crying. The former things are passed away. There shall be no more death. Abraham says, I look forward for a city whose builder and maker in God wherein dwelleth righteousness. This is what God is promising for you. When he says, I, 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 I go to prepare a place for you, my, my dear friends, it's a wonderful place. And as the, the, the Corinthian says, eyes have not seen and ears have heard. And the servant of the Lord says, regardless of how good you think heaven is, it is better than that. You understand what I'm saying? So my dear brethren, we have no excuse. We have no excuse. We have got to hold on. Hold on to the word of God. Don't listen to those who whisper in your ears. Don't listen to those around, around the, 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 the ark. I mean, I see the birds going in. And I see the animals walking in. But well, something got to be wrong. You understand? And mankind. So it proved then that the animals had more sense than human beings. What a tragedy. Let nothing separate you, the Apostle Paul says. Romans chapter 8, the closing verses. Let nothing separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Brethren, this is the Bible. Regards to what a man may say, what a man may do. The devil uses other people to pull you out. What did Jesus say in, in, in uh, Matthew 13? When the servants asked him, Master, did we not plant good seed in the field? He says, yes. He said, Master, but what were wrong? Did, would these thorns come up? He says, an enemy have done that. Shall we go and pull them up? He said, no, leave them alone. Let them grow until the harvest. I will send the angels. The servant of the Lord interprets it. She says, God brings some in the church and the devil brings some. My dear brethren, I am here to tell you, depend on the word of God. If you depend on the word of God, you can't go wrong. 
what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, and so forth? He says, He whosoever heareth these words of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man who built his house upon the rock. What is the rock? The word of God. Jesus wants you to build your Christian foundation on thus saith the Lord. And if it is built on that, the devil can't get at you. But if you build it on what people say, on sifting sand, when the, the, when the tornadoes come later on, your house will be blown away. All right? The time for my departure is come, the Apostle Paul says. I have fought a good fight, the Apostle Paul says. That's important, isn't it? I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And now I know there's a crown which the Master will give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all them who love his appearing. I pray that God will help you, that from this day forward, you may have a change of heart to do what God expects you to do and to be faithful to him. My dear brethren, may God bless you is my prayer in Jesus' name. Our hymn him of dedication will be 604. Six or four. Let's stand. <laughs> 